Thank you. We now move to topical questions. Question one, Jim Hume. Uh, thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to reports that over 3,000 patients were boarded in the wrong hospital department for their condition because of capacity shortages. Cabinet Secretary Alex Neil. The presenting officer were aware of the challenge boarding poses to all healthcare systems, and as far as I am aware, Scotland is the first country to take national action on boarding. Our own studies carried out show that boarding is not good for patient outcomes. The Herald report under 2,000 boarders in July or August, and these should be seen in the context of over 1 million inpatient episodes each year in Scotland. Through our £50 million three-year unscheduled care action plan, NHS boards have committed to work to minimising all boarding of patients. Some £8.2 million investment from the action plan has been used this year to support additional capacity and innovative approaches to improve how patients move through and out of hospital. We have also introduced mandatory nurse and midwifery workload planning tools and we are working closely with NHS boards to develop a bed planning toolkit. This new toolkit, which again I believe is a first in the UK, will support NHS boards in Scotland and their partners to review capacity on an ongoing basis. Jim Hugh. Uh, I thank the Minister for his answer. But the system is in crisis. 3,309 patients were in the wrong ward because of capacity shortages. 1,706 were in the hospital in July when they should have been discharged. And 124 of those waited for more than six weeks to go home. The, pic the picture will, of course, get bleaker as the winter goes on. Uh, we have had some news today, but it will be too late to improve the situation immediately for the winter months. What measures, has the, what measures has the Scottish Government taken to ensure that the health boards are prepared to be able to deal with the extra pressures this winter will bring? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer, it would always help if the member listened to the first answer. I have outlined the action plan that we are taking to deal, particularly with the winter surge. And let me just also put in perspective over the summer the fact that uh, 3,000 uh, uh, people boarded. That, that means that 96 per cent of patients were not boarded. Now, 4% were boarded, and the ideal would be that we didn't need to board any patient. But since 1948, there has been boarding of patients. Uh, and what we have is an action plan, both in terms of unscheduled care, but also working through the recommendations agreed with the Royal College of Physicians in Edinburgh from their report last week. It's not us that's in crisis. It's the Liberal Democrats that are in crisis. Jim Hume. Well, it's a, pit, it's a pity the Cabinet Secretary resorts to uh, cheap shots like that. They should maybe listen to the Director of the Royal College of Nursing Scotland, Theresa Fife, who said it's time for the Scottish Government to stop hiding behind sound bites. Nurses enter the profession because they want to deliver good quality care. 55% report they are not able to deliver care to the standard they want to because of the strain. Boarding means patients are on wards inappropriate for their needs, which puts additional pressure on staff. What is the government go, uh, going to do to look properly at the workforce to ensure that we have the right number of beds as well as the right number of people with the right skills to ensure service of the highest quality? In terms of bed capacity, we are uh, developing a bed planning toolkit. We are the first health service in the world to develop such a toolkit, uh, and that is on top of the workforce planning toolkit. And that is on top of the plans in place which are being activated right now that I referred to in terms of unscheduled care and dealing with the specific issue of boarding. And I would point the member out to the levels of satisfaction generally in the National Health Service which have risen significantly in the last few years. And the reason for that is that patients do recognise that we do face significant challenges in the provision of health care particularly against a background when we don't have control over our own budgets and we are, we are denied the resources from London. But they recognise that we are facing up to those challenges and we have plans in place that are being implemented as we speak to improve the service even further. Eileen McLeod. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what investments have there been in the last two years by the Scottish Government and the NHS to improve the way patients move through the hospital system, which can help free up beds, reduce the amount of time that patients spend unnecessarily in hospital, and thereby increase the acute capacity in our hospitals? 
Cabinet Presiding officer, there's a whole list of initiatives. Let me give you just one example. Uh, one of the reasons why there is a problem sometimes with patient flow, particularly for those third of patients who present to accident and emergency who have to be admitted, is that very often, uh, the, because of the daily discharge profile, only 10% in some hospitals of daily discharges of patients are done before lunchtime. Now, that's not because the patient isn't ready for medical discharge. They are ready for medical discharge, but the coordination of pharmacy, transport and other services often means that the daily profile means that most people are discharged in the afternoon or in the evening. Now, one of the ways in which we're improving patient flow is in hospitals is to improve that daily discharge profile. And if you look at hospitals like Cross House, for example, in many parts of Cross House, and I just picked that as one example, they've increased the daily discharge by lunchtime from 10% to 40%. That means the beds are freed up for the afternoon and evening admissions. And if every hospital in Scotland got to that kind of profile, then many of the problems we have in terms of people waiting for a bed after being dealt with in A&E and other issues would take care of themselves. Richardson. Presiding officer, I have to say to you that I find the uh, replies by the Cabinet Secretary breathtaking in their complacency. Three years ago, Nicola Sturgeon was Cabinet Secretary and we pressurised her on boarding out and, as the Cabinet Secretary said, a system with monitoring was introduced. Three years on, this is not being used to any purpose, as our FOI shows. We did conduct that FOI also to assess whether there was any joined-up thinking in respect of boarding out, because whilst, as he has admitted, it's bad for every patient, it is particularly bad for those with cognitive assessment uh, problems, with assessed uh, cognitive problems. These two things are not joined up question, at all, Mr. as has Simpson. been admitted. When will he accept that there are really serious problems with bed-occupied days and boarding out, which is affecting not numbers, but number of 3,000 individual people are affected by this? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer, presiding officer, unlike the previous administration, under my predecessor and under me, we have been taking action to tackle the challenge of boarding. That is why, along with the Royal College of Physicians of Edinburgh, for the first time in a long time, we had a specific piece of work done in relation to the specific problem of boarding. And as with many of the other challenges facing the National Health Service, the issue is about better planning, the issue is about improved patient flow. That is why uh, we have taken action in introducing a workforce planning toolkit and introducing a bed capacity planning toolkit. Now, these things don't appear overnight. They require, because it's the first time they've been done in any healthcare system, they take time to, to fulfil their results. But that is happening. And let us get this in perspective. As I said earlier, while the ideal would be that nobody would need to board, these numbers represent just under 4% of all patients who were in hospital in Scotland during the time period of the FOI. 96% of patients were not boarded. I don't think that is a system in crisis. It's a system with a 4% challenge that we are working through. But I think it is not right of opposition politicians to every time they stand up describe the health service as being in some kind of crisis when in fact our health service has been rated as the best in the world and the safest in the world. Question two, Alex Johnston. To ask the Scottish Government what its state of readiness is for dealing with bird flu in the light of the recent outbreak in Yorkshire and what priority it now gives this disease. Cabinet Secretary Richard Lockhead. The Scottish Government has published detailed contingency plans for dealing with notifiable animal diseases, including avian influenza, and exercises those plans regularly with operational partners and other administrations across these islands. Although there are no cases reported in Scotland, we have alerted our stakeholders to the outbreak and encouraged them to remain vigilant and seek to maintain high levels of biosecurity. Meanwhile, we are in constant contact with relevant agencies across the UK and are ready to respond to any outbreak, outbreak should occur in Scotland. Alex Johnson. 
Turkey to give a clear indication that the strain which has been reported in Yorkshire is not likely to give any concern over human health and that as the specialist poultry industry in Scotland approaches its uh, most important annual market that we are in a position to guarantee the quality of Scottish product and make sure that it sells into a buoyant market. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I can indeed give comfort to uh, consumers uh, and the member. The H5N1 strain, the strain known to cause uh, risk to human health, has been ruled out in this case in terms of the, the three cases known across the continent and down south. Uh, it's therefore, the, the Chief Medical Officer in England has said that there is a very low risk to public health and indeed the Food Standards Agency has said there is no risk to food safety. Uh, however, of course, we continue to monitor the situation closely, but I certainly agree that, uh, as things stand, we can have full confidence in the Scottish product. There are, of course, restrictions that have been put in place in terms of exports from this country. Hopefully, they will be only temporarily whilst we await the full scale of this outbreak. Alex Johnson. In the event that a strain does become uh, present, which is in danger of human health, are we in a position today to ensure that if the previous outbreak, which we had a number of years ago, were to recur, that we would be in a position to ensure that resources were available to cope with a more dangerous strain should it become present? Cabinet well, yes, I am confident we have the arrangements in place, but I think we have to be very careful. The situation at the moment is the strain which is known to cause a risk to human health has been ruled out. Therefore, this is a different strain we are speaking about, and it is very important to convey that message to the country and to the, the industry in particular. However, we have these contingency plans in place, and therefore we have a set of arrangements that will be urgently uh, put in place should the situation change at any point in the future. But this particular outbreak uh, does not give us rise to concern in terms of any threat to human health or indeed food safety. Roderick Campbell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Cabinet Secretary, I believe it has been suggested by some experts that the outbreak in Yorkshire has originated from migratory birds. Do you agree? And if so, should the public at large in Scotland be looking for signs amongst the wild bird population uh, who have migrated here for the winter? Cabinet Secretary. Well, um, as I said before, we are asking everyone to be vigilant, particularly the industry itself, in terms of any dead birds that are identified should be reported immediately. However, the fact that the three recent outbreaks covering Germany, the Netherlands and indeed here uh, on these islands have occurred in the proximity of damp areas with wild birds and the absence of any other possible link between them points towards wild migra migratory birds as a possible source of the virus. However, these investigations, as you will understand, are ongoing and as soon as the facts are available, we will put them in the public domain. Thank you. We now move directly to the next item of business, which is a statement by Alex Salmond, the First Minister of Scotland. <laughs> 